Now this one is one that I've actually really wanted to show and I've actually gone through the commentary that I wanted to do in my head over and over again at work this week when I was uh, being excited about doing this. And this one is actually a really good example on how to not play a BB in a team role. Played by yours truly, of course. Yep, I'm in the October Revolution. That's what I'm going to call it because I looked it up in Google Translate and it almost gave me a stroke from the pronunciation. And I'm like, and that's about the first time I've ever noped about out of a foreign word without trying. I was like, nope, nope, nope. And we also have McKinnon 2 in the Omaha, and we also have Mr. Nakona in the Minikaze. You see, I had this really good goof going about how he is in the Broken Turd, I mean Kamikaze, but he's actually not using the Broken one this time. Makes me sad. That was going to be a real good goof. So anyway, it's a Tier 7 match. October Revolution is fairly strong at Tier 5, but doesn't up-tier particularly well. Mostly because it lacks penetration. And it's not the tankiest thing in the world. Now don't get me wrong, it's a battleship. It can tank quite a bit, but it's not especially good at that. So we start at the sea cap. So I say, hey, let's go in the sea cap and see what's up. Now the problem with the sea cap is this thing is pretty much solid. I mean, yes, you can come through that, but it makes you very predictable. And as you'll see, it takes you out of the fight forever if you actually get bogged down in there. And that's actually one of the main mistakes I make during this commentary, too. So, yep, the cone is going uh, middle right here, the old dragon rock thing. But sadly, in a second, he's actually going to crash. And you'll see his boat can just sail up to right here and just can't stop. <laughs> while, he get, while he gets back on. Now, don't get me wrong, he'll pull his weight in a minute, but it's obviously less than an ideal situation. Because his torps would have been really helpful in the BB brawl to come. But that's okay. Things happen. You can't win them all. And as long as you can, earn, as you can learn from it, then any game is valuable, in a sense. Some more valuable than others, I suppose. Yep, so we see Nakona going. He's probably crashed by now, and his boat will slowly slow down until it stops. So he's going to try and get that back, but while he's doing that, we don't have spotting. So right where you're here, we have the Algier and the Grafs Bay. And they are both going to come with us to sea. And now, I didn't really want to go to sea especially much, but I figured these two guys are going down here to B, and if a battleship shows up on these sides with these two guys, they're screwed. Because the Algiers made a paper and the Grafs Bay DPM isn't too great. So I decide, hey McKinnon, let's go ahead and go help these guys over here. Yep, and then this guy's probably confused about Nakona, so I just go ahead and launch him a uh, message saying that he he crashed and he's going to be back in a minute, you know, just so the just so they uh, don't call him an idiot because I'm such a good person. All right, so right there is a scout plane. That means there is a cruiser over there or a BB, but a BB can't get over there in this amount of time too fast. So me and the Grash Bay are going to go in on there. We're going to play volleyball and decks a little bit. And there's the Nuremberg. Now Nuremberg is just a floating citadel, so I'm fine with that. So we're going to try and get some stuff, and we have an opposing Grash Bay. Actually, we have two Grash Bays. Now Grash Bay is tanky, but its DPM isn't too great. Yep, sadly it fires HE the first volley of the game. It seems to do it on my battleships all the time. Because see, that would have been an amazing uh, broadside right there. Probably would have gotten multiple citadels. But sadly it loaded HE first, so we go ahead and reload AP, the correct shell type. And now I'm worried about these graph bays because they have 8 kilometer torps, and that guy's going broadside. So that's why I start kiting away a little bit. Because they're about 8 kilometers away. I'd say that the ideal range for a BB, BB to shoot their guns is about 10 to 12k or so. That's when you can maximize your penetration and avoid any torpedoes. Any closer and you're starting to risk torpedoes and you get pinned a lot, so... Yeah, not particularly good. There we go, Nuremberg's dead. And now Nakona is going to be a little badass right here and uh, try and blow up these guys. Yep, see, here come the torps. And Grash Bay just ran to me, which is unfortunate, but luckily the torps flame out. So he is going to go right here and launch six torps into this first Grash Bay. There we 
we go. He's finally going backwards. Yep, so Nakona is going to drop those right there. I'll see where McKinnon was. Yep, there we go. That's one Grash Bay dead. And now Nakona, I think, is going to live long enough to get a second set off. And do damage to the Grash Bay, but I don't think he's going to sink him. Now, right here, we've seen how... We've seen how there's three cruisers right here, and that's about it. But that right there makes me think there's a destroyer there. And he takes two, which is a bit gross. So it makes me think we should go back in. Now, at this point, where's the pause button? There we go. This side just can't get trounced by this side. They have five BBs over here versus two. That's not particularly great. And these guys are going down the middle, which is good for them. But there is a kamikaze around here. Because right now, I know that he went this way. And you'll see why I know that in a minute. But at the moment, I don't know where he is, so I think he's going in the sea to defend it. So I go with them to try and uh, stop him. Now what I should have done is come here towards B to support and fire on these, B on these BBs and hopefully go over here and try and stop these guys here. Instead what I do is I go into here and take the cap and try and come out through here. And that takes my guns out of a massive portion of the fight. Because as a BB, you want to be central, so you can get fire on as many targets as possible, because your shells are valuable. They don't reload very fast, and they have amazing results if you manage to shoot in the right place at the right time. And if you don't do that, and you take yourself out of the fight, then you aren't putting damage forth, you're not helping the team. And sadly, I did not help my team very well in this match. Alright, we'll go ahead and speed up a little bit. So, yep, there we go. Nikone gets killed by... Uh, the Graf Schbe, but I think he got one set of Torps on or so. So we all go into C, when really I should have let, just let these guys uh, cap C. So yep, we'll go through there. And the Gulio's getting kind of chased around, but he'll luckily kill the Graf Schbe because he's a Gulio. Alright, we'll take that. And then we'll go through his channel. I don't like this channel, especially not in the BB, because it makes you very predictable. Now, we weren't seen going through here, so I'm not worried about it too much. But the Kamikaze's right there. Luckily, he has the... Ooh, I got, oh, yeah, I got a pin on them, so yep. To full pins on DDs do quite a bit of damage. Now, right there, you can see that he's behind that little lip, which means he can't get Torps directly on me, but he knows where I am. So I won't put it behind him to reverse and just shoot Torps straight at me. And it's a kamikaze and those Torps hurt. So obviously you're playing the game, so I can't really say very much, but McKinnon's right behind me. And ideally I would have liked her to uh, pop Hydro and go up here to kill him. But I wasn't the best at talking at this point because I was worried about the kamikaze and I was busy working and worrying at what was going on today. But yeah, that calls to be some from the uh, replay too. And I say this because the only presence we saw down here were the Torps. That means everyone else pretty much is over here and that there's probably not many people right here. And this guy's scouting on this side too, the Graf Bay too. That means there was nothing down here and the only stuff that could shoot her was from up here. And that's blocked by the smoke screen. So this would, be, would have been a good time for her to pop Hydro and come up here towards the lip. Reveal the Kamikaze, so the Gulio, the cruiser up there, and I could shoot him. But it's okay. I mean, that's what these replays are for, is showing uh, the situations as an AAR and figure out how to learn from them. So this would have been the perfect time for a smoke rush. Yep, so we'll go ahead and keep turning the guns. Sadly, October Revolution, these gun angles are kind of dumb. The two mil turrets actually point in toward the central smokestack, and it makes trying to get shells on target kind of awkward. Yep, so there go the Torps, so I don't need to worry about them now. And we're going to speed up a little bit. Luckily the Gulio is going to get in before uh, the Kamikaze can reload. He's actually doing pretty good there, where he's uh, keeping the lip between where the Kamikaze would escape from and him, so he doesn't have to worry about the Torps. So he's going to go in. There you go, there's the Kamikaze. And he dies. Now right here is where things start getting a little bit tricky. We have A, but not for long. That Leon's about to die from the Gulio. There he goes. 
So what we want to do is we want to take B, hopefully. But sadly, they have four BBs, and we only have two. And that's not especially good for a BB brawl. And October Revolution is not especially good brawler in the first place either. So what we do is we go into B. And now this move in a moment. There we go. I think. There. Now this move right here is very deliberate. It's not only getting the guns on target. Yep, sorry, McKinnon. <laughs> it's not only getting the guns on target, but I'm actually putting this island right here between Helena and the Gulio and me. This is once again uh, keeping your firing angles open. These guys can't shoot through the island to hit me from there. So I want to try and fight, fight as few of these guys as possible. And with this I can also point my nose towards them when I'm not firing. And that, and that makes me angle so I take a lot less damage. Yep, so I go in towards this island right here. Luckily the Congo kind of Removes, her, removes himself from the fight right there, so I don't need to worry about him. I just need to worry about the New Mexico, and that's ideally how I want it. it is the way to win this kind of fight is to take them one at a time if possible. So he's going to turn out and turn in. Yep, there we go. Got some fires. And now they're trying to turn out again. The Schoolio and Congo are still there. I'm still trying to keep my lines of fire open. So right here, I turn around. Because these guys are still behind the island. They can't actually get guns or see me on right now. So this is why I turn. Because by the time I show them broadside, like right now, then I'm already pretty much turned away and in, and in a perfect position to angle so they can't get full pins on me. At least from the hole. They might be able to do it from the superstructure. Luckily, he gets torps out and manages to hit the, the New Mexico, so that's pretty good for us. Now, this is called kiting away. I turn just long enough to get my guns on target, even though I probably should have waited until the shells were a little closer to reload. There we go. Luckily, he didn't hit me, because that would have been... Now, I'm trying to thought. That would, that would have been a very big mistake right there if he managed to actually get pins on me. So I'm trying to kill the New Mexico first because uh, a dead ship has its guns taken out of the fight, and if a ship has even one health left, then it still fights as if it had all of its health. So you have to be very careful about focusing fire like that, and that's why damage doesn't win games. Just because you have a lot of damage doesn't mean that it's effective damage. Effective damage is taking out ships, taking out guns so your team can win. Just going for damage counts and shooting lots of different ships doesn't really do very much. Now that goes to a point, of course. If you have a choice between shooting an angled ship and one that's broadside in a BB, then always take the broadside shot because the damage potential behind that is a lot bigger. But don't focus on one ship on uh, one ship to the detriment of the team, essentially, which I'm kind of doing right now, which is another thing that I can't do badly about this replay. Yep, and the Gulio right there is beached for some reason. That wasn't very good. I would have liked him to turn out right here so we can do a crossfire. But, no sense crying over spilt milk. Yep, he gets citadeled pretty freaking badly. And luckily, and good thing is that McKinnon's still shooting uh, the whole time, so that's pretty good. Good job, McKinnon. Trying to keep that damage on so she can start some fires. Yep, so right here I stop, as you can see, and I start reversing. Because keep in mind, stopping is not an, is not a bad idea. Especially in a battleship. In cruisers, your speed is kind of a second layer of protection for you. The faster you go, the harder it is to hit you. But battleships, they're going to be able to hit you anyway, so... When a situation calls for it, it's sometimes better to slow down or even... Uh, slow down and stop or even reverse. As, this, as the series goes on and I show more of a battleship replay, I'll be able to point it out more often. So yeah, don't be afraid of stopping in a battleship. Unless you're broadside onto a bunch of people, it's not going to kill you. In fact, it might actually save your life from torpedoes. Yep, there's a Congo. And there we go, I switched to AP. Because he's probably going to have to go broadside to me. 
or, I, or rather I'm gambling on that. And since we're closing distance on each other, eventually we're going to be so close that my pen could probably get him through the nose. So yep, we're going to go up. Sadly, that Gulio is also over there. And the Gulio has really, really good guns. And right here, this, this would have been a terrible idea going broadside right now, but I know that the Gulio just fired. I didn't know that at the time. That was a lucky coincidence. A very lucky one. So yep, we go for the waterline. Sadly, no citadels, but we do get six pens. And it is a significant damage. It's a significant amount of damage. Now he's going to try to sail away, but I can't commit it. Yep, see? Gulio just citadeled me. And so did the Congo. So now I have considerably less, less health. And at this point, the battle's kind of lost. I'm too close for my armor to be effective against these guys, and... Yeah. At the moment, I'll go ahead and kill the Congo. Now right here, the New York is coming back, and I'm the last person on my team. They have the points. I can't get to a cap. They're going to win. So the ideal situation at this point would be to just go forward and ram the Gulio. And then I would get in our 42k damage, or how many damage his HP kit bar can sustain. And yes, we would lose, but we're going to lose anyway, so that would have been the ideal situation, is ramming into the Gulio. But sadly, at this point, I wasn't quite sure how tanky the October of Lucio was, and I thought it was tankier than it was, so I tried to sail away from him, uh, stern on, and it, well, didn't work. <laughs> So, yep, we're going to turn and try and shoot him. Now, right here, after the shot, and then it, it, it would have been better to turn. Yep, see, he's turning in. That would have been better to just turn in and try and uh, ram him. But, sadly, right here, I turn out. I shouldn't have done that. I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, yep, he said it tells me again as I'm turning. New York, New Mexico, uh, New York shoots me, and then he's about to kill me. And yep, see, the guns take forever to turn. And I die.